in this whole season that I have this, these day words about the prophets, God has a specific diet for us. It's a specific verses, passages that God wants to highlight as a diet for this season. So I just, with everyone, I just said, God, just show us what do you want to open up for us for today, for this season, for this year, for this month. So I really believe my brother and my sister make sure that you take what we, what we talk about, maybe write down, and uh, go and see what God is saying to you. See what God is saying to you even in the, in the week. What I tell you today, maybe it's the 10% of what God wants to show you in the week. And the 90% of the download of what God has for you in store, you must come and receive in the week from God. Amen? We're looking at the book, Daniel. When I look at the book, Daniel, I see an uncompromised testimony. You have a testimony, a man, a woman, people that have a testimony. Oh, oh no problem. Uncompromised testimony that can bring answers and guidance to leaders and nations. These guys had a testimony, and through their lifestyle, through what they have, what they had, they brought answers. They brought guidance to leaders and nations. And secondly, I see the honor of God on the lips of heathen and heathen kings. When I look at this, because of their testimony. Amazing how Daniel and his friends they went in as sons, as young guys, young guys, but they made certain decisions. So we're going to go with certain scriptures. Just come with me. Then Daniel 1 verse 8. After these guys were together, and they are there to serve the king, they are being prepared for that. Verse 8. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself. Other translations he purposed in his heart. You can write there, he purposed in his heart. Other one says, he determined in his heart. Other one says, he made up his mind. Daniel made up his mind what type of lifestyle he will have. He made up his mind the type of lifestyle that he will have. He determined in his heart. He purposed in his heart. And my question to you today is, what is the decision in your heart? How and when will you make up your mind? You will not wara wara here and here you are like this and there you are like that. And making a mockery of the one you think is living in you. Because before the leaders here you will be like that. Before the other guys you will be like that. And what are you doing? You actually mock the one that you think is living in you, Jesus Christ. Okay, let's focus here. Thank you. May God help us. Amen. I say, make up your mind, my brother, my sister. And this is the essence. This is where it started as young men, young boys. They came in. But as this young boy, he said, I made up my mind. This is what I've determined in my heart. That is what I've purposed in my heart. You decide the purpose that you will have. You decide that the world will tell you what is your purpose. You decide that your, your strengths or your weaknesses will determine your purpose. You will allow those things, the temptations, to tell you what is your purpose. Or you decide from your spirit, you and God, you will determine the purpose. You will make up your mind. What is the type of lifestyle that you will have? And because of this, this type of man, this young guy and his friends became such men of God with stature that the one king of Babel to the other one, the one heathen king to the next heathen king to the next heathen king to the next king just started to praise God, have the fear of God on their lives and say there's no other God. And their God. No other God than their God. 
May that be your life. That people will look at your life and say, there's no other God than his God. Because he's not flirting around. He's not wara waring Say he's Christian and Jesus. And, and then he has this lifestyle. Man, he's living in some other comic. It's a joke, man. Think about Jesus in his life. It's just one big joke. And there's more reason why they will not serve God. Or you can make up your mind. And they can say, he's God. That's the real God. That's the true God. Do you have the guts to grow up? Do you have the guts to become a man of God? Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and the wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. This wasn't a big thing, man. But he decided, I will not compromise. I don't want to compromise. I don't want to compromise. And then verse 9. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion. God will give you favor and compassion for his agenda. Because God had an agenda with these four guys. And when they decided, we will rock up for that. We will be there. And in the name of our God and with our God, this is for what we will stand. We made up our mind with that. God gave him favor. I'm going to the next verse. Verse 13. David said to those guys, Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. You wanted to be treated as royalty. Yes, you can have the royalty and you can pray for all the royalty. This man said, I don't want the royalty, royal treatment. Give us some vegetables, give us some water. It's not about the royal treatment. I want to stand with my God. I want to stand and I have determined in my heart the way that I will stand. Compare our appearance and treat your servants in according to with what you see. You can do with us whatever you want. Why? He believed that the strategy was from God. Do you believe that you have a godly strategy for your life? First of all, make up your mind, your lifestyle. Secondly, do you believe in the godly strategy for your life? You can write that down. Faith in the strategy. Faith in the strategy. He had such faith. He says, you can do with us, if it doesn't work, do with us whatever you want. Then, verse 17. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Now, God gave knowledge and understanding. That doesn't mean you mustn't study. You will still have to study. Hello. But at the end of the day, God gave an understanding. A wisdom came through. God didn't give all the information. You go and study the information. But God gave an understanding. Are you with me? And then we see at the end of the day, they entered the king's service. In every matter. Everybody say, in every matter. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them Ten times better. Everybody say ten times better. Than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Who? These young boys. Afrikaans talked about the Sians. It is Sians. These boys. All the professional guys that's there in the palace with the king. Whatever the king would question them about. The answer is 10 times better. They determined in their hearts. They made up their minds what type of lifestyle they will have. And according to that, they, stood, they had the guts to stand with that. And they could stood out. They could stand out in that what God has for them. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. Now, there's a dream. Now the challenge come. Let's just read from verse 18. He urged them to plead for mercy. Because what now? They have a situation. There's a dream. There's no explanation. 
And the king says, everybody will be slaughtered. Everybody must be killed. Daniel, his friends, everybody. He went to his friends and plead for mercy from God, for heaven, concerning this mystery. Do you have that type of friends that you can go to and you say, I need your prayers now. That you have faith in the prayers of your friends. That you have that type of friends. Not type of friends that will just wara wara with you. That's not a friend, man. That's a fake. A friend is somebody that can push you to have the guts to be a man of God. Push you to walk with integrity. Push you to make up your mind. Is it left without Christ or is it right with Christ? Get that type of friends around you. Where this Daniel could go to and say, I need you to plead. Plead is not go and moan. Plead is, I believe in you that you will have an intense prayer. I have the faith in you that you will really bring this before the Lord up to such an extent that I will be able to find the answer from God. So that me, my life, your lives, and the lives of all the guys out there, even the musicians that are, will not have the answer, that they will be saved. They are not running for their lives. They're not praying that they will be protected. They're praying for answers. Are you with me? Concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men. But what happened? During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. First of all, what I want to say there is when you hear the name of Jesus, that's when he needs to be praised. When somebody using the word of Christ in vain, it's so that you can praise the Lord. There's not a purpose in that, but I'm saying you're going to turn it for the good. If somebody is saying the name of God, we say, yes, I love him. Yes, I praise him. Yes, I honor him. That's my Lord. If you're ashamed of Christ, don't say anything. But if you make up your mind and you determine in your heart that you'll become a man and not a boy with a lot of compromise, just wara waraing around, then you know nobody will use God's word in vain, God's name in vain, in Jesus' name. So it will be for your life. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Not praise him before because he gave me answer. Not praise him because I understand something. Not praise him because he, he provided for me. Not praise him because he gave me a breakthrough, first of all. Just praise him because of his name. That's it. Because you know what that name stands for. You know who, he, who is linked to that name. So when you hear that name, praise must be unto him. Amen. Start your life with that. I want to read it in a certain way. Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He, he changes times and seasons. No, I want to say he changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Focus. It's he, 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 he. In everything, it's he. So here Daniel is coming, not with the answer. All the other guys could not find the answer. I have the answer. And everybody, Daniel had the answer, nobody else. No. He came and he didn't introduce himself to have the answer. He introduced his God to have the answer. Wherever you go, are you introducing your God as the one giving you the wisdom, giving you the answers, giving you the abilities that you have? Not just supposed to have, I believe, I trust. Amen? Even he said in verse 9, afterwards, after he explained it, do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Oh, of Babylon. Those guys that are not serving God even. Do not execute them. Take me to the king and I will interpret his dream for him. He had a compassion. 
he didn't claim the victory just for himself. He didn't claim the victory just for himself. He even asked and pleaded for the guys who were in the wrong, for the guys that didn't even serve his God. Are you with me? Verse 28. He says to the king, but there is a God. He said, no wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about. But I have an answer for you. No. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown the king. Be honest about what's happening in your life. Is it the devil revealing or is it God revealing? It will be the one or the other one. You sit here with certain revelations, certain opinions. It's either the devil revealing to you or it's God revealing. Be honest and walk in that. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me. This is verse 30. Has been revealed to me not because I have greater this wisdom than anyone else alive but so that your majesty may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind because it's all about God. By fact, he has more wisdom than all the rest, 10 times more wisdom than all the rest. But David comes in humility and he says, it's not about me having more wisdom than them. This is about God that has an agenda. My brother, my sister, you're supposed to walk in such a way that I come into situations and I must be able to say, not because of what I have and they don't have and what they have and I don't have, but I'm living and I'm speaking because God has an agenda. You are put in a certain place. You are placed there with a calling. You are out there. You've been trained for a specific calling. But make sure you're not trained here at Creare or at Marcieta or wherever to have a compromised lifestyle then please rather go home in Jesus' name. I bless you. But if you are here, be in the fear of the Lord. Have respect for God. Otherwise, in Jesus' name, please leave. Hello? But let's do this with God. Let's do what we do with God. There where God has placed you in the school, there with your business, with whatever you have, do it with him. Make up your mind. Amen. Where are we now? We're going for verse 47. After everything was revealed, the king said to Daniel, Surely, 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 your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. For you were able to reveal this mystery. Surely, Daniel, you are an excellent guy. Surely, Daniel, hey man, you're an excellent guy. Yo, surely, Daniel, you can reveal visions. Surely, Daniel, no, 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 no. He presented himself in such a way that the king, this heathen king, king of Babylon, that he says, your God, your God, he's the one. May you have such a lifestyle that people, if they want to serve God or not, they will honor him. They will say, your God is the true God. My brother, my sister, more and more in the end time that we are going into, you will find the foolish and the wise. You will be the foolish because you don't understand how to take what is from today to apply it into tomorrow. Or you will be the wise that you will allow the Holy Spirit to give you that what you need for tomorrow, not what you need for today. You don't need to take what I say today. You don't need it today. But maybe really tomorrow, maybe next year, maybe even more and more and more and more, two, three, four years from now. That make you not the fool, but the wise. I hope you sit here as the wise, not as a fool. I speak to myself first of all. Because this is a prophetic book. You know, Zechariah and Isaiah prophesied intensely about the coming of Christ and what will happen with Jesus. How he will come on a donkey, what he will do. The book Daniel deals with demonic strongholds, but then goes further where this man prophesies into the end times. 
into the days of today and the days that are to come. Because they were men who made up their mind how they will stand with God. We need God's grace. Amen. Chapter 3. The image of gold and the blazing furnace. Okay. So there's the image of gold. Everybody must bow down. Then you have these three young guys. These three young guys. Verse. We're going for verse 16. Shadrach, Mishak, Abednego replied to him, King, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If you always need to defend yourself, my brother, my sister, you are the focus. You are the God. If you always need to defend yourself in your heart, always need to defend yourself in your mind, then it's because you sit with either some other rejection, some other issue, some other thing. It's about you, man. It's not about somebody else. It's about you. It's not about God. It's about you. But if it's about your God, then it's not, I'm standing out. The whole world can bow down to that image. I will not run around the corner and so that I don't offend anybody there and stand around the corner. But I'm not going to bow down, but I'm going to stand around the corner because I don't want to offend those. I will be visible. Everybody will visibly see that I'm putting my life on the line, but I will not bow before another God. You have the guts to deal with the rubbish in your life. You have the guts to stand out, to say it's about Christ and Christ alone. I hope you will be one of those friends. We do not need to defend ourselves, even if you ask me, us to do. In this matter, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able. He is able. He is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Because we are not in your hand. We are in the hand of God. Hello. Even if you go in the fire, you're not in the hand of the heathen king. You're in the hand of God. But even if he does not... We want you to know, even if our God does not do what we ask him to do, even if you trust your God to do something and he doesn't do it, even if you plead with your God and he doesn't do it, you want the world to know. I want you to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. It's not that we need to say this to you, but we want you to know it. <laughs> You want the people of influence in your life. Those friends that are actually bad influences. Those friends that, that push you actually with temptations into rubbish. Those leader, leadership. Those guys out there. It's not that you need to defend yourself. And it's not that they necessarily ask you, are you going to do this or are you not going to do this? But you say... You would want them to know that you're not going to do it. King, we just want you to know. So this is a man that's going to throw them in the fire. And now they emphasize the point that can really, really take them to the fire. <laughs> it's like, please take us to the fire. <laughs> oh, come on. We just want you to know it. You must know it. You must know it. We want you to know it. That we're not going to bow. <laughs> oh. They made up their minds. The gospel is not for what I can get out of it. If it works for me, I'm with it. If I'm getting breakthroughs, or there's certain provision, or there's certain stuff, then I'm going with Christ. But if you don't have it, then I'm not going with it. I don't say I don't go with Christ. But my testimony is compromised. I will play the game. You don't say you play the game. But you make that decision for you. For your kids or your future kids. No, may God help me. May God help you. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. He said, after... They were thrown into the fire. The guys who threw them in the fire, they, they died. They were burned alive. 
But then the king found them. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. It was Jesus Christ. My brother and my sister, you can pray against the fire. But many times, God's going to put you in the fire that the world is setting up. And even in the end time, more and more, the fires will be there. And God will put you there. If you are the type of man, woman, that made up your mind that it will be God and God alone. No, for the rest, no. You will not end up in the fire. You will bow down to whatever systems come your way. But for those who can make up their mind that I'm standing with Christ, who can determine in their heart, who purposed in their heart a certain lifestyle, who have the guts for that, you will be thrown in fires set up from hell, set up from the devil, set up from, by the world. Hello? And with all of that, my brother, my sister, what is it all about? There, God wants to show himself. God wants to show himself to you. Are you with me? And the world will see Christ with you. Where? The world will see Christ with you. In the fire. It's not Isaiah that said, when you go through the fire, I will be with you. I will be with you. So God will organize some fires. God will organize some fires that you have temptation, you have the opportunity to compromise with some friends that you think you are friends. They are your friends, but you are also not a friend of them. But you are the curse of a stumbling block, or they are the curse of a stumbling block, if they take you away from running full out with what God has for them. But my question is, will you be that type of friend? That are willing to stand, even if fire comes. God wants to brag about you. He believes that you will stand with him, so that when you are put in the fire, when the enemy thinks he's winning in your life, when the enemy thinks and the world thinks that they can destroy you, <laughs> then Christ will be seen. And the fear of God will come on the heathen kings. So the church will be put in fire more and more in the end time. But God has the faith that you as a man of God will stand. God has the faith more and more in the end time that the foolish will just fall away. But that the wise that filled them with Christ but the wise that made, made up their minds how they will serve him. That in that day, in the fire, Jesus will be seen. And the world will look. And governments will look. And people will look at the church and say, who is with them? Who is with them there in the fire? They're supposed to be destroyed. They're supposed to be totally gone. They're not gone. They're unharmed. But who is with them? And the fear of God will come upon them. Because they will see God with you. So don't pray that all the fires must just be gone. Pray that Christ will be seen in the fire. And that you will not compromise just to pray the fire away. But pray that you will have no compromise in your life. That you will have the guts to make up your mind who you will serve. We are talking about people being prepared. Especially for the end time. Hallelujah. What did the king say? Servants, servants of the most high God. Amazing that this worldly king, call him what? You're a servant. I know you're a servant of the most high God. The world that even don't serve Christ will say to you, servant of the most high God, please come out. Because I want to know what happened. They want to know your testimony because they see God is with you. And they call you a what? A servant of the Most High God because they see. You don't have this attitude of a Pharisee to go and preach to others and just point the finger and have some other double standard life. They can see you serve one and that one alone. That's an honor to be called by the world. A servant of the Most High God. That's an awesome title. Uh, 
Halleluja. Come out. Come out. Come here. Then he looked at them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Praise be to the God of Niku. Praise be to the God of David. Praise be. Hello? Praise be to the God of Titan. That's what the world must say. Nobody asks you. Let us stand now. Let's praise the Lord. And if you feel okay, you will maybe sing along. This heathen king. Praise be to his God. Praise be to the God of these guys. Who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted him. And he defied. They trusted him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives. They were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Oh, come on, man. This is the guy that be offended. He's supposed to be offended. But he's so shocked about their testimony that he's excited about the fact that they didn't bow down to his initiative. Didn't bow down to him and what he has. <laughs> totally. Whew. And he declares the testimony of these three guys. The world will testify about the greatness of your God if you can make up your mind how you will stand and with what type of lifestyle you will have with God. Where it is not determined by if you have breakthrough or no breakthrough. If you have answers or no answers. If he provided or not provided. Paul says, I went through this and that. I went through the good, I went for the bad, through the bad. But I've learned to be content. I've learned not just to be okay. To be satisfied in Christ. Why? For. And that Philippians 4 verse 13 starts with four. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that I will be a man of God that will stand doesn't matter what. And I want them to know I will not serve. That what is from the world. But for that, you need to first tell yourself. You need to tell your soul. You need to tell those emotions. You need to tell those stuff. I will not serve you. Because your emotions can put you in the fire. Your mindsets can put you in the fire. Your friends can put you in that fire from hell. And for all those types, all those chachas, all those kings of Babylon that are speaking to you in here, you need to tell them, we will not serve anything else, even if we end up in the fire. Why? Because it's not easy to deal with some emotions. It's not deal, easy to deal with your hurts. It's not easy to deal with a lot of rubbish. It's not easy to deal with you if you started to connect with the other guy with the same demonic spirit. With the same issue, with the same problem. It's not easy to break with that. Because you fear you can, you, can, you can lose your friend. According to your definition of friend. Let Christ be your best friend. He died for that friend sitting next to you. Don't deceive him. Amen. Therefore what? They trusted in him. They did all this. Therefore, I decree. Who's that? The king. The king. This heathen king. They just now had a decree of how they will bow before what he bring forth. Now, suddenly, what? I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Mishak, Abednego, anyone that says anything against Jesus Christ, be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble for no other God can save in this way. Oh, come on. Are you with me? That's some type of a testimony. I don't think that's a very good evangelism tool. <laughs> You'll be cut into pieces <laughs> if you use the name of the Lord in vain. But this was the passion of this revelation because this man I mean, he's in top of the world, man. In the whole known world of every nation, he's like this God, this empire that this guy built. 
So he declares for all the nations. And this guy is so shaken that he says, you don't respect that God. You don't respect Christ. You'll be cut into pieces and your house burnt. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Next one. Nebuchadnezzar had the dream again. But before that, chapter 2. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Chapter 4, verse 2. This man says, To all the nations and peoples of every language who live on the earth, on the whole earth, it is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. How great are His signs, how mighty His wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. It is my pleasure to testify. Oh, it is a pleasure for you to tell people that Jesus loves them. It's such a pleasure to tell about his wondrous works in your life. It's such a pleasure to give a testimony. It's such a pleasure to tell the people that you know that he's not serving Christ. Not to rebuke them in the sense of condemning them. No, it's such a pleasure to talk about the greatness of your God. This is the heathen king. May it be the pleasure of your boss, of those guys instructing you, of the guys working with you. May it be a pleasure to them to talk about what God is doing through you. May it be a pleasure, not even what God has done for them. It's not a pleasure. He's not excited about what God has done for him. Because, hello, he's first of all excited about God saved that, those guys through that fire. Man, they trusted him and look what God has done for them. <laughs> it's not even his testimony. Hello, it's their testimony. <laughs> but he's excited about their testimony. This heathen king that is in charge of the nations of the earth. There will come a day. They, where they will be leaders in the world. They will be so excited about what Christ is doing through his church. What Christ is doing through men and women who made up their minds. That they will not compromise. If they benefit or not benefit. Out of it. God is awesome. Amen. Verse 37. Dream is fulfilled. Now, once again, now I near we got Nisa. I praise and exalt and glorify the king. Amazing. You know, this whole book of Daniel is all the heathen kings that are praising the Lord and glorifying the Lord and <laughs> glorify the king of heaven. Because everything he does, everything he does is right. And his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. He is able to to humble. Why did this happen? Because this man, Nebuchadnezzar, this king, oh, come on, man. He took the right guys. They raised him up. They were raised up by God. This man acknowledged God. He respected the men of God. He bragged about their God. You know, and then one day, it became more about him than about God. And then this Daniel, you have, you have such a success, such a favor with the king, such an excellent relationship. The king trusts you. He gives you what you need. He, he takes from your lips what, what, what wisdom there is. And there he has a dream. And now you need to tell this king, you know, you're going to fret grass. You're going to eat grass like an animal. Uh, Lord, is there not something nicer to say to the king? You know, everything is going very fine now. Hello? The challenge is there again, Mr. Daniel. You can just be straight about what God has shown you. And with fear and trembling in the sense of he was shaken with what God has shown him so many times. Because he had this revelation of who is this God. 
and that he needs to stay faithful to this God. When you need to stay faithful to, the, to your God, it will not just be all moonshine and roses. That's moonshine in the Russia. It will not just be all honky-dory, everything is nice. Sometimes you will be challenged to stand up for Christ. My brother, my sister, there where you are trained, there where you are working, to stand up for Christ, sometimes you will be shaken with what God will challenge you with of how you're supposed to stand with Christ. Daniel was shaken, but he, he was faithful. He decided, I will say what I need to say. So, uh, let me just go with this. When, after a whole season, for seven seasons actually, that this Nebuchadnezzar was just eating grass like an animal because he didn't acknowledge God. He came to his senses. Now, my brother, my sister, you can free at grass like an animal. You can carry on where you're not giving God the glory. You can stand with Christ. You can have awesome testimonies. You can have awesome testimonies, awesome favor with people. Awesome people, uh, even a lot of people acknowledging your testimony. Acknowledging your testimony. And then after that, it can become more about you. And suddenly you are fretting grass. You are eating grass like an animal. And you are surviving in life. You're coping with life. You didn't die. That's actually a miracle. How a man can eat grass and then still survive. But in any case, that's what happened. God's grace can be over you. He's waiting for you to acknowledge that it's only him. It's not your greatness. It's not your issue that is so great. It's not you that need this and need that and need that and need that. But it's all about him. And when he acknowledged that, at the end of the time, I raised my eyes towards heaven. Not to myself and my greatness. I raised my eyes towards heaven and my sanity was restored. This crazy man, he was restored when he what? When he started to honor God. The guy that cannot acknowledge Christ, where is his sanity? Can he not see God in creation? How is it possible for a man to say there is no God? Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples, all the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand, or say to him, what have you done? Are you with me? Oh, we can say, no. You are just serving Christ because everything is working out. But if your emotions is not lacquer, it's not nice, then what is your commitment? If things are not working out for you, people are talking behind your back, and, and it's not, it didn't stop. You trust in God, for, and he didn't stop. But in the midst of that, what are you going to do? I'm asking, what are you going to do? You decide that you will praise him, doesn't matter what. I will honor God, doesn't matter what. Can you have that capacity? Make up your mind. Amen? Verse 37. Now, I praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven, because everything he does is right, all his ways are just, and those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. God is able. Let's say God is able. God is able to do whatever he wants. He can take the king of the known world, the king of the nations, and humble him. Boom. From king to animal. Eating grass. This God is able. He's able. His deeds, whatever he does, is right. His deeds. His ways, his ways are just. And all I can say is, God is able. God is able. And it's not for me to declare him able if he has done all the things that I ask him to do. Not if he's able to do, not if he's doing what I ask him to do. Then I declare he is able. No. 
men and women of God, come and have impact. Amen. Now, next one. Belshazzar, the next, next king. And still, Daniel is standing strong. Verse 22. No, let's just... Uh, this man, he did not humble himself. He once again, he took the pride on himself. He's the man. Man of power for the hour. Then, the writing is on the wall. It is written on the wall. And the four words, the meaning. First one, the meaning. God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Second, you have been weighed on the scales and found one thing. Last one, the king, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. What are we saying? First of all, God has numbered your days of your reign. The quantity of what you were supposed to be able to produce is gone. Two talents must become four. You must have a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest if you are faithful. Five talents must become ten if you are faithful. There's no multiplication. Quantity is not there of what you were supposed to produce. Secondly, you've been weighed. The depth, the quality of what you're supposed to have. There's no quality in you. There's no quantity that is from heaven. There's no quality that is from heaven. And lastly, there's no authority that you will have anymore. Your kingdom is divided and given away. Is not the man with the one talent? Because there were no quantity, because there were nothing that multiplied through his life. There was no quality in him as a servant. Then at the end of the day, all authority was taken away. For the guy with the two and the five talents, five talents became ten, and the master said, over ten cities I give you authority. To the guy with the two, four talents, over four cities I give you authority. Guy with the one talent, take away all the authority, take away everything. And give that one talent to the guy that has ten. That sounds so unfair, man. That's now a real rich man. The guy with the ten talents. Now you give that one talent to that guy also. Because I can trust him with money. Because I can trust him. Quantity, quality, I can trust him with authority. Are you that type of guy? That you will honor God. That if you are faithful, there will be multiplication with what God has for you. If you are faithful, there will be quality coming from in your words, in your attitude, in what you do behind the scenes. There will be quality. You will not be a fake. You will be true quality. Hello? And you will have authority. Authority for what? That the enemy cannot walk over you. That you're not a product of the world. You're not a product of what the enemy vomits on you. You're not a product of whatever comes your way. No. You're a product from the heart of the Father. And what is from heaven, that has an impact on you. And where you go, you change your environment. That type of authority you have. God's going to help us. Amen. And then, chapter 6. Daniel in the den of lions. Not a lot that I want to say. Verse 10. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published. About what? <sighs> the focus is not supposed to be God anymore. But about worship this king. When Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room once again. Like in the beginning, he had friends that knew about prayer. This time, when these guys said, we get nothing against Daniel in what he does wrong. We, like verse 5 says, finally these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So the world is saying more and more and more and more in the end times. 
when you walk accurately with Christ. I'm not talking about you being perfect. You don't need to be perfect. But you have such a respect for the cross. You have such a respect for the blood. Then when you are in the wrong, you are quick to confess. You are quick to deal with it. You are quick to say, guys, help me. Brother, help me. Leader, help me. I need to walk accurately. I don't want to be fake. I, don't, I want to walk in the light. I want to be accountable. Help me. I want to have the right lifestyle. Hello. They could find nothing. But there's something, we must stand with something against the law of God. Against the law of God. So this prayer thing cannot happen to anybody else. Now they're waiting for him. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had, had been published, that he's not allowed to do it, he went up especially to do that. He went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem three times a day. He got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Whatever the enemy throws against you, be faithful. Do that prayer. Do that living full out for Christ, just as you have done before. You will not be shaken by what the world throws at you. But with every time you make the decision to stand stronger, you rise with stature. When I decide to stand against the temptation, when I decide to stand against that rubbish, it's not I decide to stand and not to fall. No. In the decision of standing, I'm rising. In the decision of standing, is I humble myself before the Lord and not bowing before this rubbish. I'm bowing myself, humble myself before the Lord and He lifts me up to the next level. So with every decision in Christ, he takes you to a next level, next level, next level. Allow him, allow him. I pray that for you. I pray that for me. Giving thanks. So he was in trouble. They caught him. The king was very sad, but he had to throw him to the lions. Okay. The king had a wonderful night. No. Well, Daniel enjoyed the night with the lions. The king, he was without eating and without entertainment. He couldn't sleep, the king. <laughs> this heathen king couldn't sleep. Okay. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and he hurried to the lion's den. He came near the den. He called to Daniel in anguished, in anguished voice. Daniel, servant, servant of the living God. Once again, your major destiny, the biggest title that you can have. Servant of the Most High. Servant of the living God. Has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Has the God whom you serve continually, that people look at your life and say, you are continually in prayer, you are continually just serving, you are just always serving this God. Servant of this God, not Christian, not Christian in name. Not Christian in name. But servant of the Most High. Where I can see you are always serving Him. Practically. What did God do? Was he? Daniel answered, verse 22, My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in the, his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. King was overjoyed, overjoyed. He shut the mouths of the lions. My brother, my sister, God will not take you away from the lions. 1 Peter 5 says, the devil is walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the roaring lion will be around you because you can be quality. You can be a man of God. You can have impact. Because this man is prepared. And through his faithfulness in how he made up his mind, how he stood with Christ, how he determined in his heart, and it was God and God alone 
God is taking him. And even with all these processes, every time he humbles himself, God lifts him up. Humble himself, God takes him to a next level. God takes him to his next level. We are ending with chapter 6. But as from chapter 7, he's getting even into far beyond being prophetic about the day. Such a prophetic man with such stature that he can see into the end time church. That with the rest of the chapters, we will go later another time into the place where he prophesies of what he sees for the end time church before the second coming of Christ. Because this was the type of man. This was a man of stature. Who gave God the glory. That before he says, thank you. If they would say, Daniel, he says, no, let me introduce you to my God. Let me introduce you to my God. Are you with me? The words of those people cannot eat you. God will shut the mouths of the lions. The lions will still be there. You will be still in the presence of the lions that want to devour you. The lions that can destroy you. And we, sometimes we can pray for those lions to disappear. And then we don't understand why they don't disappear. Because one, God wants the testimony that in the midst of those lions, nothing can hurt you. Nothing can destroy you. He wants the testimony that you are not fearful among the lions. He wants a testimony that the lions are there, but they can have no impact on you. No impact. No impact. No impact. So my brother and my sister, when those words come to you, the words of temptation, those stuff from a friend that you think is a friend that can devour you, that you can destroy your life that you have in Christ, that can destroy your commitment to Christ, those words come to you. Stay with Christ. Focus on him and God will shut the mouth of those destructive words of that one that you call a friend. Or that one that you think is with you. But the devil is using him. No. No, don't be you that type of person in somebody else's life. Don't let, don't be one of those lions. Are you with me? Let the line of Judah speak through you. That will bring freedom to everybody around you. Amen. But in that place, make sure that you serve Christ faithfully. There, he, his life spoke. And the people cannot understand. Why are your lives not destroyed through the fire? Why are your lives not destroyed by those devouring lions? They are hungry. They want you. They want you. They will not destroy you. Pray that you will be faithful in the midst of those destructive lions. More and more and more and more into the end time. Because tomorrow and your children, if Christ tarries to come, they will go through fire. But maybe because of your life and your prayers, May Christ always be seen with your children, with your wife, with your husband, with you in the fire. May it be seen that the lions could do nothing. The lions will be there more and more and more in every nation. The lions will be seen. It's not that the Christ will rise before the lions come, before the fire will be there. No, in the fire he will be seen. With the lions, the impact will be seen. That's my prayer for you. That's what I trust God will do for you, in you and through you. God help us to, to come into this place that through your grace, we can make up our minds. And I pray for every man, every woman in this place, that they will right now make up their minds to follow you full out, or to turn away. But God, have mercy on us that we will be able to make the decision to go full out with you. That we will determine in our hearts 
to have the fullness of what you have for us. We need your mercy. We need your grace to be having the capacity to stand as women and men of God. I pray for every young man, every boy here, God, to, to stand up, to rise up, and that they will stand in the midst of temptation. Stand when there's group pressure. Stand so that they have the capacity that through their testimony, kings will come to, you, to them. That people will come to them knowing they have answers. They have wisdom that is beyond their age, beyond their understanding, beyond their circumstance, beyond their experience. They have a wisdom that we all need. I pray that for every man, every woman here in this place, in the name of Jesus Christ, and those who will be watching, in Jesus' name, Lord, bless them, bless us, help us all, Lord. We want to see your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, through our lives, as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen.